First of all, um, can I just commend all of those who have fought and campaigned uh, and indeed continue to campaign with the emails that they're sending appealing to us in this House and particularly to the government to, even at this late stage, to rethink uh, what they are doing uh, and not to uh, deny the survivors of mother and baby homes the closure and the justice that they deserve after all that they have suffered, all they have been through, all they have had to fight for, you should be, and this day should be the day when they get that closure and they get that justice. And instead, as you well know, they're not going to get that. Uh, and tens of thousands of people are going to feel excluded and insulted, uh, and that the abuse uh, and the suffering and the injustice they suffered at the hands of the church and the state uh, for decades and decades and decades continues if you deny them that closure and that uh, justice. And not those, just those, by the way, who are excluded uh, on the arbitrary grounds on which you've excluded them, because it's an insult to every mother and child uh, who suffered forced separation, who were in the mother and baby homes, because it shows a singular failure for the government to understand what the crime and the abuse was that you can come up with this arbitrary, unjustifiable uh, scheme which includes some, excludes others, and that has a league table with a price tag on it, uh, which, if you like, uh, commodifies your suffering uh, on this league table. Do you not understand how insulting that is for all that people have uh, suffered? I have to say, one of the particularly dark, terrible ironies of something else that's going on uh, at the moment is there are very dark and sinister forces running around this city for the last few weeks uh, claiming utterly falsely uh, that uh, vulnerable, desperate immigrants uh, and asylum seekers are a threat to women and children in this state because they are foreigners. Well, actually, those people need look no further than this house, uh, the uh, political institution that is supposed to represent the Irish people, and the religious institutions, Irish religious institutions, Irish political institutions that orchestrated uh, decades and decades and decades of systematic abuse uh, of mothers and children not poor, desperate uh, immigrants uh, or asylum seekers, but the state, and that it's continuing to do this and insult and abuse uh, those uh, who suffered. And I, I searched in vain in your response to the second uh, stage speech, uh, debate, uh, or uh, in any of your commentary on this, any justification for the minister for this uh, arbitrary exclusion. I mean, Minister, you know, I'm an adoptee, as you know. Uh, I was born in a mother and baby uh, home. I was in a couple of them, actually, because I was sent off to England to be ushered out of, you know, out of sight. Child of a fallen woman, illegitimate child. Uh, that's how uh, mothers and the children were characterised uh, and then brought back. I don't even know how long I was in a mother and baby home. I don't know. And it's irrelevant whether you were one week, one day, six months, or two years, because the central crime that church and state committed was the primal wound of separating a mother from their child, which has, from the minute that it happens, a lifelong effect on mother and child. A lifelong effect. It is the primal wound that begins on day one. Uh, and in some cases, and I have to say, I always say it, my story turned out to be lucky. 
Uh, I eventually was reunited with my mother and I was adopted by a wonderful family. But the truth is, whether your story and uh, what happened was terrible, and for some it was terrible, absolutely terrible, all of their lives, they suffered all of their lives because of that primal wound inflicted by church uh, and state, but every one of them, whether they uh, were boarded out, suffered abuse, uh, forced to, mothers forced uh, to work essentially as slaves, shamed all their life, the stigma of illegitimacy, whatever it was to a greater or lesser extent, everybody had a crime committed against them from day one when they were torn out of the arms of their mother or the mother had their child torn out of their arms. From day one. Uh, and that uh, their lives, uh, the lives they would have lived were taken from them, okay? Because of the, the twisted, perverted morality of church and state that deemed some people legitimate and some people illegitimate. And fallen women. I mean, shocking, perverted, twisted stuff. And now we have a league table and arbitrary exclusions uh, a failure to deny, a uh, failure to acknowledge the individual specific suffering that some people may have suffered because of being boarded out, because of discrimination, uh, because of their mixed race, or whatever it is, is shocking and still no justification. So, Minister, I appeal to you if you are serious, and the officials, whoever come up with this plan, even at this last moment, we don't just want a report. That's just a way of trying to force a debate and put it up to you at the last minute. Rethink this so finally people can get the closure and the justice. Step back from this now and listen to the survivors, the people who were at the wrong end of the abuse and a systematic abuse and crimes the church and state committed. And for God's sake, do not negotiate with the religious organizations that were responsible. There's no negotiation required. Take their assets off them and make them pay the redress. Uh, and all of the uh, uh, apology and uh, uh, compensation for the crimes that they committed. We shouldn't be talking to them, we should be telling them.